Yo ho ho sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today I'm gonna teach you how to play battle and unison cards and how to battle in the Dragon Ball Super card game. Cut to the bomb. into it here this is my battle area so here i have my leader area i have my energy and active mode this is going to be my battle area here and combo area i'm keeping everything a little bit closer together because i'm going to simulate gameplay on the other side to show you guys how to battle so here I'm going to be playing the Gogeta Unison. The Gogeta Unison has a specified cost of three. As you can see, the three blue circles in the top left corner next to the X, which means I have to pay a minimum of three for him. The energy have to be blue and I have two mono blue energy and I have one energy that is blue and yellow. So this counts as a blue or yellow. So I'm going to be using it as a blue in this instance. So in order to play this card, the way that I'm going to play this card is I'm going to exhaust my energy by turning it sideways and I'm gonna play Gogeta in my unison area. When Gogeta comes into play, he's gonna come out with three markers on him, which is represented by a three on a dice. So each time that he is attacked and damage is done, he will lose a marker and go down one marker until he has zero markers, at which point he'll leave the unison area and will go to the drop area. So in this instance, there's three cards out here. Two out of these three cards, I can attack. I can either attack the leader, I can attack the unison, or if this, is, since this is a battle card, if this battle card were in rest mode, I'd be able to attack the battle card. But since the battle card is not in rest mode, I cannot target the battle card. Unison cards and leader cards can be targeted when they are in active mode. Active mode is when a card is upright, rest mode is when a card is tapped sideways. So for now, the only two targets I can attack are this unison or the leader. So for this example, I'm gonna be going ahead against the unison. So I'm gonna turn my unison sideways and declare an attack on my opponent's unison. At this point, the battle begins, and the first thing my opponent has an opportunity to do is negate the attack. If they choose to negate the attack, the attack ends. If the attacking card has an auto that says when this card attacks, the auto will still resolve, but the battle will be over after the negate is declared. Now, if my opponent does not have any negates and they choose to not negate this attack, then we go into the battle step. So I initiate the attack. I choose to attack my opponent's unison. My opponent says no negates. If I have any autos, the autos will resolve at this point. Now, if my opponent had a blocker on their board, they would declare the blocker to redirect the attack. But since there are no blockers, we're gonna go into battle. At this point, I have to declare how much I'm going to be attacking for before my opponent has the opportunity to defend. Now, in this instance, my opponent isn't gonna have an opportunity to defend because unisons do not have defensive battle steps. So I will, this attack will go through no matter what. And it is 20,000 to 20,000, so I'm not gonna choose to combo. And since I'm not comboing, it'll deal one damage to this unison and this unison will be marked, knocked down to one marker. My unison is a dual attack, so it will stand up and then I can declare the attack again and attack the unison again. And if there are no negates, then the same thing will happen. This will go down to one marker. Now the story with battling with a leader is a little bit different than a unison that doesn't have any autos that when they swing. So when my, with my leader, I'm gonna choose to attack my opponent's leader. And when I choose to attack my opponent's leader, this is when my opponent has the opportunity to say whether they're going to negate or not. And at this point, they're gonna say no negates. So my auto is gonna resolve. My leader says when this card attacks, draw one card and then choose up to two of your mono blue energy and switch them to active mode, which means you don't have to switch any energy to active mode. But in this instance, I am going to switch energy to active mode. Now, this attack is going at my opponent's leader card. Now, if I do not combo, this is going to be 15,000 to 15,000. And if my opponent does not combo, the tie goes to the winner. So that means that the attack would go through, it would deal one life damage to my opponent and the life point would go into their hand. If I wanna guarantee that this hit will go through or if I wanna have a greater chance of this hit going through, then I would choose to combo from my hand to increase the power of this attack. So this would be an example of a card that I could combo. This combo says zero plus 5,000. So I could put this card in my combo area and change this attack from 15,000 into 20,000. Now my opponent would have to go above 20,000 in order to block, which would mean they would have to use two 5,000 combo powers to go above 20. Most combo powers are in increments of 5,000. So generally to attack, to block an attack, you need to go a card above what's being comboed in. The attacker always combos first. And once you declare your combo, you cannot change your combo anymore. Card 
Cards from hand can be used to combo. You can use as many cards as you want from hand to combo. Combo power is very valuable and it's generally used best towards the end of the game. Another thing that can happen in battle is something called arrivaling. Arrivaling is a keyword skill which is covered in the skills video if you haven't seen it already, but I'm going to explain how arrivaling works right now. So when I attack with my leader and my opponent says no negates, then my auto will resolve, which for my leader I drew a card and I choose two of my energy and I switch them to active mode, and now I go into my combo step. So in my combo step, I'm going to choose to put one blue card and one yellow card in my combo area. And then I'm going to use a card called Senzu Bean. Senzu Bean allows me to choose one, pay one energy and then choose two of my energy and switch them to active mode. So I'm going to pay one energy there and I'm going to switch two of my energy to active mode after using the Senzu Bean. The Senzu Bean will also give one of my cards 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. In this case, I'm going to choose my leader. So to show that 5,000 power, I'm going to put a dice with a one on it to show that it has an extra 5,000 boost. Now, since I have a blue and a yellow in my combo area, I can pay three energy and arrival this card called SS2 Kefla Lightning Speed. SS2 Kefla Lightning Speed is an eight energy card. However, she has a skill that says arrival for two blue and one yellow energy. And since in my energy area, I have two blue and one yellow energy, I can pay those energy during my battle step to play this card. And when this card comes into play, it has an auto that I choose one of my opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and send it to the bottom of their deck. And then it has a bunch of other skills, which we'll go over in the skills video. But now that this card is played, now my opponent has their chance to combo. Another way to arrival, if you don't have a blue and a yellow card different in your hand, there are some cards that are blue and yellow. And if you play a card that is blue and yellow in your combo area when you're comboing, that will also fulfill the requirement cost for arrival, which we also cover in the skills video. So check that video out if you want to learn more about the skills of cards. If a battle card is in rest mode and another battle card attacks that battle card, after the battle, if the attacking battle card wins, the card that's been overpowered will go to the drop area. Something that happens in the Dragon Ball Super card game is there is no counter damage. There is a skill called Revenge, which we'll go over in the skill videos, which does KO attacking battle cards. However, when a card attacks another card, the card that is being attacked it does not deal counter damage as it does in some other games. So just to show how to simply play a card here, I'm gonna play this card. This is a one energy card, and I need one blue energy since it has a specified cost of one blue. So I'm gonna pay one blue energy and play this card in my battle area. And this card says when this card is played, draw a card. So that card allows me to draw a card when I play a card. A lot of cards in these games either draw when they attack, they draw when they're played, or they draw when they resolve skills. So that's been how to attack and how to play battle cards in the Dragon Ball Super card game. I hope you found this helpful. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and tune into the rest of the series to learn about the skills and the rest of the game. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip would be don't play with your fingers in your mouth. You can chip your teeth. You can damage your temporal mandibular joint. And it's also kind of auto cannibalism. So I would just recommend avoiding it. I am Joku DMD. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you guys in the next one. My old professor told me that Tums is like chalk.